Welcome back. You are watching Roundtable and we are with Mr. Uday De Silva. He is the Secretary General of the Federation for the Industry Technology Industry in Sri Lanka. So, Mr. De Silva, continue from where we stopped. We were also talking about business process uh, outsourcing with respect to the IT industry. Yes. So, continue from there. Well, <coughs> let me uh, clarify that. When, as I said, the IT industry is basically mainly it is twofold one is that usage of IT in the country or you know in, in all aspects of it and using that to make revenue foreign exchange revenue when I say revenue because when you say a business any business happening within the country is considered a business there are numbers attached to it there are revenues attached to it but as a country when you say revenue earner it has to be really the foreign exchange coming in so for that uh, one of the major segments uh, playing a uh, key role is ITBPO, basically Information Technology Business Process Outsourcing, which is happening in very reasonably large scale now and it is heading towards a heavy growth. This basically ex to explain you what business process outsourcing is, that is where we have the service centers in this country and use our skilled resources and our infrastructure and provide services in terms of IT development, IT services to the organizations elsewhere in the world. So that basically they are paying in terms of US dollars, sterling pounds or whatever foreign currency comes into the country. So that basically is what we say the IT BPO. So it is across many industries. It, it can be across many industries, but you know, there are things like KPO, knowledge process outsourcing, but uh, I, I'm directly talking of the IT and the IT BPO, that which, is, the business which is processes. directly the IT segment of it, which involves majority of the IT component, but even knowledge process outsource can be, it, it's outsourcing process, but you know, uh, one would uh, classify that not, not directly under IT. However, it's definitely a, a revenue earner for the country. But the, the direct revenue earners, are one is BPO, other one is that we had to, now the product sales, now for example, now today, India, taking a very recent example, I mean close example, India, most of the IT applications, if you look at today, even sold in Sri Lanka today, are from India. I mean, there are worldwide giants like, you know, from US, uh, UK, Europe, all that. But if you look at, for any of these such IT usage software applications, you can find a product from India. Whereas, if the Sri Lankan industry grows, we can stop all that money go out of the country, wherever it, you know, not all, I, w I would say a good portion of it, because you, you may not be able to do everything, but at least to a great extent, if you can have your own application software running in our country all the applications or reasonable level then we can stop a heavy amount of foreign currency flowing out of the country that is an uh, indirect revenue earner I would say like you know while we do services and products to the external world and bring money in we also can stop money going out by having our own products developed. So what you are saying is about application development application in the country software itself. Application usage, development and usage. Right. If you go to uh, taking, I, I would uh, cite example, uh, uh, if you take a very large bank, banking organization, uh, that organization may require a heavy information technology application to uh, run its infrastructure. Now today, there isn't a uh, fairly comprehensive large application even if there is they have not been taken or given sufficient recognition so even our institutions are not very much keen in using those you know they would look at this you know so-called international products to go with how come India may, may make us made a success for us they were like you know I, I don't know it's right to say uh, it, it, it's right and it's required a uh, patriotic to some degree you know uh, some time back so they were making sure that wherever possible and as much as possible, they used their own homegrown software applications for their own usage. So where that becomes a test ground for you. 
you know. You just can't develop a software application. Go elsewhere in the world and say, look here, we have a product. Buy it. They will ask, where is it being used? At least are you using it to your own country? If it is not the case, we, you, you basically cannot. So there's, there is why I say we have to first ensure that most of the products that we want to sell overseas, we have to first start using them locally, then have a test ground here, then we can leapfrog to overseas. Even if you look at most of the uh, Sri Lankan companies, maybe SMEs who have grown, have used the same model, you know, they have basically used it, Sri Lanka as a test ground and then gone beyond. So that to, towards that, Federation what is doing is we are trying to see that we build more and more strong companies here and help the existing SMEs to build their products and expand and also providing them linkages in the international arena. That is to uh, kind of compete with the other players in the international market exactly. and get a competitive advantage of getting a, a, a place and positioning Sri Lanka in the international market, Certainly. is it? So how can actually the SMEs and our Sri Lankan entrepreneurs, especially in the IT sector, can develop this competitive advantage in terms of securing tenders, maybe securing projects and actually delivering in a way that they can uh, sort of make a mark for Sri Lanka? Yeah, certainly, I mean, we have taken uh, certain steps during past few years. The Federation has lobbied with the government and we were able to at least tell the government tenders to give some weightage if there is a local component involved. You know, it's very difficult for somebody to say, look here, you don't buy anything from elsewhere, but you know, it, it's not proper to say that also. But of course, in the process of looking at evaluations, they were given, a lo if there is a local component in some way, at least as, as a implementation support and all that, so then the, uh, they get a certain amount of points in the process of evaluation. So that is one way of doing it. And the other is we have given, we, the government has agreed to give tax, various tax uh, incentives or various uh, concessions in terms of uh, the, the, the depreciation and all that. There were certain schemes defined those who use uh, local software, locally built software. That encourages the institutions to use software products used locally and that will help those institutions to stabilize their products which can be taken overseas. And also now the Federation FITES has linkages with regional bodies, for example ASOCIO. ASOCIO is an organization which comprises of 25 regional countries including Australia, Japan, Singapore, all these heavily IT developed countries. So we have built linkages in the industry bodies in those countries where our member companies, SMEs especially because very large companies may not need you know, such uh, interference or help from the federations. So we are helping them to go and establish in different countries. Uh, there are many country, many companies today Sri Lankan companies who have established some offices at least in some of the regional countries which is very uh, interesting to say you know the, the this is the basically the starting point of the industry to go into the international market. So that means actually to establish themselves locally and develop products and all that but also to have their offices internationally in the at least in the region exactly. and also if you look at other countries coming and setting up their outsource development centers here is it a friendly country for those people to uh, countries to come and set up their outsource development centers? Certainly yes because if you look at uh, during the uh, past war times, you know, there were uh, various uh, threats from the locally already set up such outsourcing or service organizations to pull out from the country. I know personally there are there were so many uh, Sri Lankans who were taking a lot of effort to hold those, you know, I don't think any of those were pulled out heavily, but there were a lot of uh, uh, stress from the principles in living in other countries, you know, this is not very secure, things. Like. So all those have basically now gone. So the environment and the ambience is becoming pretty good for, you know, uh, settling down. So that is basically a serious uh, contributor, contributing factor for the growth. Uh, I, I would like to refer to a report produced by A.T. Uh, 